coming out. Would everybody stand real quick, and we're just going to give everybody an air hug all over the room. So I want you to make uh, yell across the room. Tell everybody, just wave at people, yell their names, hug them right now. Go ahead, hug everybody. I know we've got people online. Um, if you're online, my name is uh, John McAfee, pastor of First Assembly of God. We are meeting live and online today, and we are glad to be worshiping with you. So once again, yell at somebody and say hello, and then we're going to get started today. Um, a couple, you can be seated for a moment, and then we're going to get into worship. I want you to get your phones out, your new uh, um, your phones out, and if you have the U version um, app on your phone, you may have time to download it. If you don't, um, it's called U version. But if you go to U version and go to the menu, and there'll be a, you can click on events, and then you'll see Sykes, Sykes and First Assembly. That's where the music, um, the song lyrics will be today because we don't have a projector over here. And, and so we had to get creative with that. And, um, and so that's where we're going to be with that. So if you go to YouVersion, you can download that as well. Uh, a couple of announcements before we get into the worship and the word today is this coming Wednesday is our mobile food pantry. Who's excited about the mobile food pantry? It's going to be good. You can still give toward the mobile food pantry. Um, you can just, if you want to make a donation and just um, say mobile food pantry on an envelope, that is fine. And this Wednesday, we do not know the exact times or, or whatever, but it's roughly 2 to 2.30 that the truck is going to drop. There is a really strong chance of rain, go figure, right, um, this coming week. It seems like it rains every other day. But we will figure it out as we go, and it will be a drive through uh, pantry. Nobody will be coming in the building. It's out in the parking lot. Brian's got that all figured out, um, I think. And uh, so, and you sure, we do, right? And, uh, and so um, we're, we're going we're gonna to try this drive through world. And, but I, I have another um, thing that I, I – this just – it's moving like the Fast and the Furious – um, about a month ago, I, I got a, a call from a, a local person here in this town, and we began to work on some programs and different things for food and, and helping food during the uh, COVID. And, and this particular person said to me, he said, sure would be nice if some of our, this is, this is not a believer, I will say that. Sure would be nice if some of our churches that have gyms and kitchens, and she looked at me kind of like that, would do something a little more to help with this pressing need that we have in our city. And I don't think she was aiming it at me personally. But about eight months ago, I got a phone call from a guy up near the St. Louis area that's part of the USDA um, a grant program. And we just really didn't roll with it very much. At our last board meeting, I brought this up to our board. And basically, all the guys on the board looked at me and like said, duh. <laughs> And uh, tonight at 5 o'clock, I'm going to have a special meeting in this room right here if you'd like to know more about it. I'll tell you this. It's not going to cost the church anything in the long, in the long haul. Um, as far as from it's, it's an amazing God dropped something beautiful on her lap. And this coming Thursday, right, yeah, Thursday, we are going to have to have 700 meals prepped and ready to go on Thursday. That sounds overwhelming. Come tonight at 5, and I'll take your fear away. Because we can do Everybody say we. We can do this, right? And so, and I want to remind everybody that this Wednesday night there will be no online Bible study because of the Helping Hands ministry training and all that's going on and the mobile food pantry. Would you stand with me again? And if you've got your phones, have it ready for your worship music. We're going to get into a time and a season of worship before we get into the word this morning. We're going to try to keep this about an hour long is what's been recommended. So we're going to we're going to try to do what we do. I know some of you in this room probably lean heavy on the conspiracy theories of, of if what if, if this thing is real. And some of you are on, on the lean really heavy on this thing is going to take us all out. And so where I'm going to be with our services, I'm going to meet you somewhere in the middle. if That's OK. So wash your hands. Don't touch your face. And uh, lift your hands in the worship, right? And um, we're going to do this. So let's pray. Would you pray with me? Not, not listen to me, but would you pray with me as we just seek the face of the Lord? Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We are so grateful to be gathered in this room today just with your people, Lord. I know there are people online that's worshiping with us right now and, and in this room. And it's a beautiful picture of the body of Christ right now. 
But we pray for your presence to be in this place as we just turn our attentions off of all of the stuff and we turn our attentions on the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe. We love you, Jesus, and we give you our worship. In the name of Jesus, would you shout amen? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to be back here and see faces in front of me. You have no idea how glad I am to be back here today. <laughs> well, let's stand, and if you're at home, Feel free to stand wherever you are, and let's worship our King today. I'm a child of God. Are you? Amen? Let's sing. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost, but He brought me in all oh, His love for Thank you, Lord. Lord, we are thankful now more than ever that we can come together and worship you together as the family of God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no
enter in at this moment right here. Great. Let's do it again. Just sing it out. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to love. Let's take this moment right here and let's just pray. I want us to pray for those that have been affected by this virus. We want to pray for those that are in leadership through this virus. We want to pray for those that are just not feeling well today. We want to pray for those that are financially in some troubles. And and let's just pray. Let's just call on the name of the Lord right now for he inhabits the praises of his people. I believe that he's in this place today. Father, we come to you right now because we know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. None of this has taken you by storm. None of this has taken you by surprise. None of this has taken you out of your zone of who you are. So, Lord, we just simply submit ourselves to you this morning and say, God, without you, I can have no healing. Without you, I have no sustenance. Without you, I have no provision. Without you, I have nothing. So we call on you right now, the God of all creation. And we pray for our president right now who is going probably through the the roughest month or two of his life. We're praying for our governor right now. We're praying for our school superintendents and principals and sheriffs and city councilmen and mayors and police chiefs. Our God, this is not any, no one has ever been prepared for this. God, we're so grateful for our hospitals and doctors and, and nurses throughout this time, Lord God. We lift all of them to you right now. God, for we are living in a season of fear in this country. But we know that you are an overcomer. We know that you, Lord, overcame death, hell, and the grave. And you said that you've made us more than conquerors in this world. And so, Father, I pray as the church rises up, Lord, that we would just acknowledge that you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That today, Lord, we just call on the name of the Lord and it says that there will, those will be saved. When we lift Jesus higher, he will draw people to him. Let us be a lighthouse, a light, a city set on a hill that can't be hidden today. As we become salt and light to a city, to a county, to a region, to a state, Lord, that needs the church to shine in the darkness. We give you praise. Once again, would you just sing this out? Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and Can we just give the Lord praise right now in this house? Would you just say thank you, Jesus? 
Would you shout to the Lord right now? We love you, Jesus. You are good. Your mercies are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, once again, would you say amen? And would you, across this room, give each other a fist bump? It's kind of funny doing church this way. It's like, well, you, you want to, you know, somebody can look around and say, well, you just want to do it in the gym because you want to take the easy way out or whatever. I'm telling you, man, it is hard not doing church over in that room over there. It is hard. I, I, I have learned how to be a video editor over the last 50 days. Um, how many got to watch the Kid Men Live? Um, we've had fun with that, but my goodness. Um, Thank for for Derek to helping us out. We set up the sanctuary over there to looks more like a, a recording studio, and and it's just it's been crazy. And I knew that I got several calls this week saying the pastor we're just not comfortable yet coming out in public. And I said don't don't don't. Um, for those of you that felt comfortable coming out, thank you for being here um, today as we celebrate Mother's Day together. And we're together. Isn't this nice though being here? We're six feet apart. Um, I got hand sanitizer. I will ask you this today. When you leave, you don't have to, but, but man, it would be great if you would. There's some rubber gloves over there on the tables, and we have um, Clorox wipes. If you would love to wipe down your own row, that would be great <laughs> because uh, we're going to end up doing that anyway. So, But if you would help us out a little bit and make sure you uh, don't touch your face and wash your hands and use hand sanitizer. So go ahead and turn to somebody and tell them that right now as we get ready for the message. And um, Well, it is Mother's Day, and I know over the next few weeks, we're not sure what is going to happen with um, what the governor and what our superintendent's calling for us to do. We're just kind of winging it. But for right now, there will be no Sunday school. There will be no children's church, nursery um, Sunday night, Wednesday nights, those kind of things. We're going to gather on the Sunday mornings. And tonight we're not having any service, but we're having a quick meeting at 5 o'clock for the food program, if you can come out. But with that, the kids are in here, and I want all the parents to, to, to clap right now and say, kids, we're glad you're here. Tell them you love them. Would you tell the kids that you're glad we're with us? And so I would like to create a service that maybe will keep our kids a little um trenton i believe told me that what i told him earlier he said pastor there's about a hundred percent chance i won't fall asleep today so so they're gonna he, they're, they're gonna help us out with a sermon today so i'm gonna use the kids probably the next couple of weeks to help with the sermon and without any further ado i have asked the one and only mr keston long to come and open this season of our sermon in prayer he looks so handsome today. I'm so grateful for this young man. All right, Keston, would you lead us in prayer? Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and please help everyone who is fighting the coronavirus and help all of the leaders get through this and Help our pastor take us through this day. Amen. All right. Thank you, sir. And then when I ask Caleb, he's going to come and help me. He's going to be my uh, sign. You can just stand over there with these, and we'll, we'll figure this out in a minute. And we are going to have a Mother's Day sermon here. And I'm so grateful for our kids. And uh, But today we are really grateful for our mothers. Amen. Without my mom, I wouldn't be here today. And, uh, and you probably have the same testimony. How many have ever built a house or building a house or have ever done a remodeling job? Raise your hand. I, you know, and I heard a few kind of groans and grunts with that. 
It's a painful process, and I want, you, I want you to realize that when you do a project like that, now, if you're Richard Hampton, you know, he's got magic fingers when it comes to this stuff, and, and I watch Richard work, and it's just like, I have the same amount of fingers, same amount of hands. How, do, how can he do that? And he, and uh, So when it's a project, how many are with me that's like, this should take a half hour, it takes you three days. Anybody else with me on that? Yeah. So I'm not alone with this. Here's what I've learned. There's four principles I learned about home projects, do it yourself, is it will take more time than you planned. It'll always take more time. It'll cost more than you planned. Oh, yeah, we can tear that wall out for $100, $1,000 later, right? It will always be messier than you planned, and it will require more patience than you thought possible. And, uh, and, and probably some of those moments required um, marital counseling after it was all over. So, But building a family has probably the same four principles that you have when you're doing that. When you build a family, you can remember the first child you have that did not come with some sort of a manual. And your first child, you, you went like, well, this is going to take more time than I planned. It's going to cost. Well, I'm, I'm finding that out now. It's costing more than you planned. It, it's messier than you planned, and it will require more patience than you thought you had building a, a, building a family. And so today, as we talk about our mothers, I found some mother's quotes, and these are just for moms. They're not, no one's famous here. These are just moms. And one mom says, there is no way to be a perfect mother and a million ways to be a good one. I like that. Another mom said this, the moment a child is born, the mother is also born. She never existed before. The woman existed, but the, mo- but the mother never. A mother is something absolutely new. Another mom said, a mother understands what the child does not say. Another mother said, when you were small and just a touch away, I I covered you with blankets against the cold night air, but now that you are tall and out of reach, my hands cover you with prayer. This morning, we're going to look at some different moms, eight eight different moms, biblical moms that paved the way for all of us um, where we are today. Today, you uh, may not be a mom in this room. I'm not uh, a mom. And how many of you uh, would say, well, yeah, I'm not a mom, but, but I'm sh- pretty sure that everyone in this room has a mom. And we could probably all agree that the moms are pretty special. We can all agree that they're pretty wonderful and, and pretty awesome. Right now, go ahead and pat your mom on the back if she's here. And uh, I, I want to take you back in time this morning and look at a few moms that paved the way for all of us. And this is where, in a moment, I'm going to have some kids help me out. And uh, and these eight moms are are role models. Um, These eight moms are the key role mothers of bringing Jesus to our lives. None of these moms that I'm talking about today were perfect. If you're a mom in this room, would you would you? think that you are perfect or would you think that you're just you're not yeah but even though you're not perfect as a mom you're still pretty awesome and do pretty awesome things and you're in and moms are wonderful all of the moms that i'm talking about today were not perfect but they showed the strength and this how god used them and and they god took their imperfections and he created something in them that we to this day are still living God rewarded these moms that I'm going to talk about this morning with a confidence that was in him. The first mom I want to talk about, and if you and, and we do have notes on you version, correct? So you can follow me along. I'm not going to be reading all of the passages um, this morning, but we're going to look at Eve. And Trenton, would you be my first helper? I just want to make sure you don't fall asleep. Come over here to Caleb, and he's going to give you a sign that says Eve. And then we got to stand six feet apart. Just want to make sure that's public. Hey, that's that's not six feet apart, man. I'm kidding. You're fine. You're fine. So I want you to stand out here in front of everybody because you are way better looking than I am. So everybody can see this. Everybody, what does his sign say? I didn't hear him. Did you hear him? Okay. What does his sign say? 
So let's talk about Eve for a moment. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, we see a story. And verse 2 says, Later she gave birth to his brother Abel, and Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. So Eve was the first woman, but not only that, Eve was the first mother. Pretty special. Without a single role model or mentor in Eve's life, she paved the way, and she became this title that no other woman has ever had, the mother of all the living. Eve was the mother of everyone that has ever lived. She and Adam, they lived in paradise, a perfect place, but they spoiled it. Do you remember why they spoiled it? How? They, um, they um, eat the fruit that they, they eat the only fruit that God told them not to do. Yeah, that's perfect. They, they ate the fruit that they weren't supposed to. They rebelled against God. They didn't listen to God, but they listened to Satan instead. And so Eve suffered terrible grief when her son Cain, he murdered his brother Abel. And yet, despite all the tragedies we see with, with Eve, she went on to fulfill her part in God's plan, and they populated the earth. And we are here today because of Eve. Now, the next person I want to talk to, I specifically want to bring up here, and that is Sarah. Because, Sarah, the person that I want you to hold the sign for is, guess who? Sarah. So go, so see Caleb, and he's going to give you a Sarah sign, and, uh, and you can even take that home with you because that is so special, that Sarah sign right there. This takes you all the way to Genesis chapter 21 and verses 1 and 2. It said, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son, Abraham, uh, Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God promised. Sarah was one of the most important women in the Bible. She was the wife of Abraham, which we know this is not the mother of all who ever lived, but she was really the mother of the nation of Israel. But there was one thing about Sarah that was interesting. Sarah was barren. It meant she could not have any kids. She could not have any kids at all. And so she conceived through this miracle in spite of her old age. And she was a, a, an older lady. Sarah was a good wife, a loyal helper, and a builder with Abraham. Her faith serves to us today as a great example for every person who's ever had to wait on God. Sarah was that person. And so we have Sarah. So we have Eve and we have Sarah. I need another helper. Who would like to help now? All right, Mr. Lincoln, come on down. Go see Caleb, and he's going to give you a sign that says Rebecca. Everybody say Rebecca. All right, so hold it high so they can see. This is Rebecca. This, this found, is found in Genesis chapter 25, 19 through 24. I won't be reading that. You have it in your notes. But Rebecca, like her mother-in-law, um, was Sarah. Rebecca was also not able to have children. She was what is called barren. But when her husband Isaac prayed for her, God opened Rebecca's womb, and she was able to give birth to two sons. Anybody want to tell me the name of those two sons? Jacob and Esau. And uh, we know that later on, the name Jacob, he gets his name turned to Israel. So this is a very important story. Now, this was during an age when women were typically submissive to their husbands, right? Now, not Rebecca. She was a little, she was quite assertive. Maybe a little bit more opinionated and maybe a little more 2020 in her. She, uh, she uh, at times, Rebecca took matters in her own hands. Sometimes that worked out. And sometimes it turned into disastrous consequences. But in our case today, it has led us to where we are today. So, Rebecca. Now, I have another mom I'd like to talk about who wants to help me with this. Colton, come on up here. I got a good one for you. The name of this mom, come on, you got to see Caleb, but I want you to say it out loud with me real quick. The name of this mom, her name is Jacobed. 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 I don't know of anybody that's named their daughters Jacobed. 
that could be. I don't know. I just don't know of any. But Jochebed is a story we find in Exodus chapter 2. Raise it high so they can see this. Jochebed. Now, who was Jochebed? She was the mother of Moses. Mother of Moses. Possibly the most underappreciated mom in the entire Bible. She's, she is not really mentioned a lot, and except in this moment. And she also showed probably the most tremendous faith of any mother that we see in the Bible. Now, during the time of Jochebed, she has this baby, Moses, and to the king, the Pharaoh, had sent out this edict and said, all the baby boys are going to be, they're going to slaughter them. They're going to kill all the baby boys. And, uh, and this was a way that they would, cre- they would stop a generation of, of the Hebrews. They, wanted, they said that the Hebrews are growing way too fast, and we're going to take all the baby boys out, and we're going we're gonna to slaughter them. And so what does Jochebed do? She sets her little baby boy, she creates a basket, and she sets it in the Nile River with the crocodiles and the snakes. And she puts her baby out there, and she prays, and she says, God, please help us, hoping that someone would find this baby and would take care of him and would raise him. And as you would know, and I know you know this story, but God worked it out. Her baby found Pharaoh's daughter in this story. Shachabed became her own son's nurse as a slave. God used Moses mightily in his life to free all of the Hebrew children from the 400-year bondage of slavery that they had been in in Egypt. God used Moses to help re- to relieve that. And that's where we get the story of the Red Sea and we have Passover and all this because of Moses. But what if Jochebed would have said, mm, that's too scary? But she didn't. Although little is written about Jochebed in the Bible, her story is one of the most powerful mother stories, I think, in all of Scripture. I need another helper now. We need another helper. Keston's got his hand up. Come on, my friend. See Caleb over there, and he's going to give you a sign that says Hannah. Hannah. Everybody say Hannah. Hannah's story is one of the most touching Bibles Uh, stories in the Bible, I think. It's a very difficult story um, for some mothers to read. Like several other mothers in the Bible that we've talked about today, um, she knew what it was like to be barren. She could not uh, conceive or have a child as well. She was not able to do so. And also, there's a story of Hannah because back in that time frame, uh, men had more than one wife, and Hannah was cruelly bullied by her husband's other wife, and it was a bad story. But Hannah never gave up on God. Finally, her heartfelt prayer was answered, and hold that up high there, Keston, so everybody can see Hannah. She gave birth to a son, and his name was Samuel. And and she did something entirely selfless and, and to honor her promise to God. What's her name again? Hannah. She gave God her son to serve in the, t- in, the, uh, in, the, in the tabernacle there. She did something so amazing. She gave her only son. Huh. Sounds kind of a familiar story, doesn't it? But what God did in that situation was God favored Hannah with five more children and blessed her greatly in her life. And Samuel became one of the great, great um, prophets of, of Israel. We have another story that of a mom. And who would like to come up? Who, who wants to help me? Where's Ethan at? Is he hiding from me? Okay. Do I have another helper? David, you want to help me? Mary Beth, come on. Yep, yep, here we go. Here we go. Run, run, run. Find Caleb. He's going to give you something that says Bathsheba. Um, I want all the kids to say Bathsheba. You can stand on there. All the kids say Bathsheba. All right, now Bathsheba is found in 2 Samuel. You can also read this story in Matthew chapter 1, verse 6. Bathsheba, now I'm going to tell you, she was, she was an okay lady. She did okay things right. But King David had a problem, didn't he? 
King David was what was known as lusting after Bathsheba, and it was not a good story. He was the king. He looked out his window, and he saw a beautiful woman, and he's like, ooh, la, la, and he did the wrong thing. He should have turned his head the other way and walked the other way. But David, he arranged even to have Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, he was a Hittite, killed in, uh, to get him out of the way so he could have Bathsheba. Bo 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 Bathsheba, right? And God was so displeased with David. God was angry with David. Matter of fact, David's actions, what happened when this baby was born with Bathsheba and David, God struck that baby dead because it was not a holy union, and God was very dis- displeased. But in spite of, and this is the good news for us, I think, as believers, in spite of the heartbreaking um, circumstances, Bathsheba remained loyal to David, and their next son, Solomon, was loved by God. And matter of fact, he grew the kingdom so big, and he became Israel, one of Israel's greatest kings. From David's line would come a guy by the name of Jesus Christ, who became the Savior of our world. And Bathsheba would have the distinguished honor, and this is amazing to me, of only five women in the Bible have this honor of being listed in the Messiah's ancestry. You can see this in Matthew chapter 1. Bathsheba, even during this whole circumstance, this whole ordeal, is listed in Jesus' ancestry because Jesus came to set the captives free and to forgive us of our sins, didn't he? This takes us into the New Testament. I need somebody else to help. Who am I missing here? I got kids hiding from me. There we go, Landon. There you go. Come on, Landon. All right, go see. uh, There we go. We're going to do Elizabeth. So come on down here. Elizabeth is in the book of uh, Luke. We can read uh, in uh, 157 through 56. Also, here's another woman who was barren in her old age. She could not have kids. Elizabeth was another one of those miracles of the Bible, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. She and her husband named this son a really great name, John. Right? Right? As the angel instructed. But like Hannah, before her, she dedicated her son to God. And like Hannah's son, he also became this prophet. What, what, what do you guys think his name was? John the what? John the Baptist. We got some smart kids here. John the Baptist is who we're talking about. Elizabeth's joy was complete when her relative Mary. Now, who was Mary the mother of? And when Elizabeth's relative, Mary, comes and visits her with her, and she was pregnant, to give hope to the entire world. And so that takes us to Mary. And Mary, can I use you since your name is Mary? You want to help me? No. Mason, you want to help me? Okay. Ethan, don't want to help me? I'm going to have to start calling adults here. I got any more kids? Any more kids? Who? David, come on. Come on, David. Run, Ethan. Come on, quickly. Here we go. Here we go. And uh, you're going to hold the one of the most important signs. Mary. You guessed it. All right, stand right out here so they can see this beautiful sign. Mary. This is a story we find in Luke chapter 2 as well. Mary was the most She doesn't have the mother of all of Israel. She doesn't have the mother of all the living. But Mary was the most honored mother in the Bible, the human mother of Jesus Christ, who saved us all from our sins. Although she was a very young girl, she was a very humble girl, she was a a peasant girl, but Mary accepted something so difficult in her life. She accepted and she said, yes, whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do. And because of her choosing to follow God's plan, Mary suffered enormous shame, enormous pain, yet never doubted God. And she bore the Son of God 
We celebrate Christmas with Jesus' birth. Mary stands, fi- fi- um, she stands highly favored by God, a shining example of obedience and submission to the Father's will, and we, we honor Mary today in this, on this day, this Mother's Day. Now, there's one more sign, one more person I want to talk about, and I'm going to ask if Sarah would slide over one way or the other, and I want Caleb to stand right in the middle with this sign. And right now, this is not about mothers so much. This is a, go ahead, hold it up. We're going to talk about somebody very important right now. What does the sign say? And what that means is that's coming from me right now, which means everybody should say me. You're important to God. God has a plan and a purpose. Not one of these ladies when they were born, thought that they would grow into be what they were. None of those ladies probably realized that in, in, in May of 2020, they didn't know what that was, that there would be people still following God. And on our website and our Facebook page, we have a tagline that we are beginning to use with things that are going on in our church and our community with all that's happening. And it says this, together we give hope. Would you just say that with me tonight? Together we give hope. One more time. Together we give hope. When I look around this room and I, and, I, and I can look into the camera and I know that there are people out there who are listening and watching, when I, I understand and see what is going on right here, I understand that together is more important than us being individual. Together we give hope. I don't know what God wants to do with your life. I'm not sure. That is between you and God, and I would ask that you daily find that out. God, here I am. But today, you are very important. All mothers are very important. But sitting in this room today, I want to honor everyone here by saying God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You can look at every one of these signs up here, every one of these women that was a mother that bore a son or, or you know, that, that, that moved us forward and to the point of Jesus saving us of our sins. And today, Jesus is saying to us, will you be one of these You don't need to be perfect. I've taken care of that for you, he said. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. I've taken care of that for you. You don't have to. All you need to do is say, yes, Jesus. We sang it a minute ago. Yes, I will. Would you say that with me right now? Yes, I will. This coming Wednesday, we are going to have the opportunity of touching 200 families as they drive in our parking lot. Let's give them more than food because together, what do we give? Hope. Together, we give hope. This coming Wednesday, together, we can give this parking lot a lot of hope, a lot of people, 200 families. This new ministry that we're starting called Helping Hands Food Program. Tonight at 5 o'clock, I have an informational meeting. I'll tell you everything that I know. You can ask me any questions you know. But I know one thing. We have needy people all around us and kids all around us that need our help. And we have an opportunity of a lifetime because together we, what do we give? We give hope. We give hope. I love Night to Shine because at Night to Shine, we give hope. I love Royal Rangers. You know why? Royal Rangers gives hope. You know why I love youth group and children's church and kid men? Because it gives hope. Why do we want a women's ministry and a men's ministry? Not because we need another thing to do. Because together we give hope. And so this Mother's Day, hope is what it's about. I I don't have any Special gifts for the moms. We were kind of told not to give out things and stuff, and so we're trying to be. So parents of your kids, I'm sorry that I gave them paper, printed paper. Um, but today I want to give you hope, not from me, but I want to give hope from the Scripture. And I want you to jump on board with what God is laying in front of us because we have an opportunity of a lifetime, I think, 
to reach more people in this season of our life than ever. We have hopeless people everywhere. Hopeless people. I've been very busy with um, the chaplaincy over this course, and I'm telling you, the only thing I, I'm going to say about it is there's hopelessness everywhere. Hopelessness everywhere. But together, we give hope. Will you stand with me? It's really weird to say that we can't lay hands on each other or grab the person's hand next to you and that kind of stuff. But in the spiritual realm, I want you to pray for the people on your right, your left, in front of you, behind you. And I want us to pray that we become a church that gives hope, not necessarily a church that just does a program here and there. Or once a year we do our, our, our big thing and we say, look at us, we did our big thing and now we're done. I want us to every day together give hope. Are you with me on this? Together, we give hope. Would you pray with me for everybody here? And then uh, we're going to dismiss in the best fashion we know. And I pray that God will be with us today. And if you get a chance, mothers, I have a, a, a Mother's Day video on Kidmen Live, and I'll have it posted later, um, the pictures that you sent to me. It'll be online. But right now, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for mothers. And as we go back in Scripture all the way from Eve even up to Mary, we thank you, Lord, that even then you didn't choose the most perfect women. As a matter of fact, the ones that we read about today, um, most of them were barren, but you provided a miracle. None of them were perfect. Some of them were living in sin, but still is listed in, in, in the the ancestry of Jesus himself. So you don't really look at our past and say, nope, you don't qualify. You look at us beyond the blood that you poured over us. You look at us beyond sin. You look at us with a love and with a grace that no one knows how it's even possible. And we say thank you. And to respond to you today, Lord God, we pray for those around us, in front of us, and behind us. And, 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 and we pray, God, that you would bring hope into this room today, that you would bring hope into the people of this room today, Lord God. But Lord, together that we would give hope to a community and together we will give hope to a city. Together we will give hope that only you can give. And so, Father, I pray for every mother in here that we give hope. I pray for every father, every mother, every father, every sister, every brother, every mom, every dad, every grandma, grandpa, man, woman, boy and girl in this room. We give hope today. And we, we thank you. We love you. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Would everybody shout amen? Amen. God bless you. And the off, uh, Rick is right there. And the offering bucket is the Kansas City Chief offering bucket right in the middle of the room. Or you can go to our website, sykesandfirst.org, and click on the Give tab or drop your offering there. God bless you as you go.